What's up guys, Eber here with Hurricane X, and if you're in the market for a gaming headset, you'll most probably go through a lot of options with varying price points. But if you're willing to spend less than $100 on this gaming accessory, and if you want the best bang for your buck, there's a new kit on the block from Kingston HyperX, and it's definitely worth checking out. But before that, quick look at our sponsor. This could be you, every time you turn on your PC. Super chill CPU, happy you. Kraken X61 by NZXT. Purchase discount in the description below. Meet the HyperX Cloud Stinger, a $50 gaming headset targeted towards gamers who are on a budget but not willing to take a significant hit on build quality, comfort, and the last piece to the equation, sound. This happens to be the lowest priced offering in the cloud headset lineup, but that doesn't mean you should ignore it. Compared to its bigger brother, the HyperX Cloud that retails for $80, it comes with a much better build quality, detachable microphone, included accessories, and better sound signature. The Cloud 2 gaming headset that retails for $100 just adds 7.1 virtual surround sound, which I'm not a fan of generally. And finally, put it up against the flagship Cloud Revolver that retails for $120, the only improvement would be a much better sounding microphone compared to the original Cloud. But can the Stinger offer some of the best elements found on other headsets? We'll find out. Let's start with the design. The matte black finish throughout the body along with the HyperX branding on both ear cups won my heart over typical glossy plastic finishes that you get with other cheap gaming headsets. Albeit, the build quality is pretty darn impressive for the price. Uh, it's made out of hard plastic material that complements a much lighter body, but the durability factor is minimal, so be aware of that. It won't survive many temper tantrums after you've been killed in your favorite FPS. Comfort-wise, I have to give this to Kingston because for $50, I was expecting some sort of discomfort somewhere in the headset, but that actually turned out to be the opposite. The signature memory foam has plenty of cushion to prevent your ears from making contact with the drivers, plus the headband also features appropriate padding, and given the close back style, I was genuinely satisfied wearing this for long gaming sessions and even watching content. The clamping force was also minimal, and I didn't notice head fatigue during my use, which is so much appreciated. You'll find adjustable steel sliders to adjust the headband depending on the size of your head, the steps are well defined and tight enough to prevent slipping. The ear cups feature 90 degree rotation and this is hands down my favorite feature because when I'm resting these around my neck, having them laid out flat gives me more room for my head to move around, which I couldn't have with my DT990 premiums. The microphone arm uses a swivel type mechanism with a little bit of flexibility to move around. Once you swivel it all the way up, it mutes the mic, which is a smart feature in my opinion, and we'll get to the testing shortly. Do note that it's non-removable. If you're wondering about adjusting volume, don't be afraid, Kingston has built an intuitive volume slider on the rear side of the right ear cup. It's a much better solution over standard inline volume controls that I'm typically not a fan of. The cable is non-removable and it's not braided, but Kingston has reinforced it well enough on the headset to accept rough use. Also, you won't notice much of the reverberations found on the revolver's braided cable, so basically you won't hear brushes against anything when you're using the Stinger. The cable that comes with the headset is 1.3 meters, which is pretty short if you decide to route it behind your PC, but they do include an extension cable that splits the stereo and mic plugs, and it gives you an extra 1.7 meters, so that solves the issue. Kingston has also targeted the Stinger for multi-platform compatibility, which means you should be able to hook this up to your Xbox One or PS4 controller, or any mobile device that accepts a 3.5mm headphone slash mic input. Once again, pretty smart approach for making the included cable shorter. The microphone quality is surprisingly good for the price. Uh, I'm actually recording this directly to my phone so you can get a rough idea of how it sounds like on a mobile device. Uh, it doesn't sound too harsh or muffled, whereas it's more clear and audible, so the person on the other end won't have an issue hearing you. They have built in some uh, noise cancelling characteristics and it works as it should. I have my office fans along with my system fans running in the background and it does a pretty good job isolating them. 
Let's move on to sound quality and right off the bat I was not expecting such great sound quality coming out of these headphones, especially since they cost $50. There's more emphasis on the bass which is perfect if you're into FPS titles. I played Overwatch and the newly released Gears of War 4 for PC and I'll admit, I felt like I was immersed in the game because of the wide soundstage and extra low end power from gunshots. The high ends were fine tuned for casual music listening, but the mids were taken over by the low ends. This is strictly a gaming headset and once again, I can't emphasize how great it sounds for the price. The Z9 Neo by Zalman brings all the right features on a budget. With a large windowed side panel, 5 included fans and an excellent interior layout with super simple cable management. Get it now, link in the description below. So there you have it, those are my thoughts on the Kingston HyperX gaming headset. They nailed the design, the build quality and sound for the price, uh, plus the added features like 90 degree rotating ear cups, uh, adjustable steel sliders, comforting foam material on both the uh, ear cups and headband, uh, plus built-in volume controls is much appreciated. They don't have any built-in lighting controls, which is totally fine with me because I'm not going to be looking at them while gaming. The multi-platform support is a bonus feature and for those of you looking for a pair of gaming headsets that can go along well with your Xbox One or PS4 controller, should consider this. In fact, as I mentioned in the beginning, if you have less than $60 to spare on a gaming headset, the Stinger will not disappoint. I'm Ebar with Hurricane X, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.